Welcome to Videorial CD001 Corel Draw X5 Basics, creating artwork for a letterhead part one. Now, the best way to learn to use a program, especially a graphics program, is to set yourself a little project. So in order to, um, to get you to learn or teach you how to use Corel Draw, I'm gonna give you a project to do, okay? We are going to create some artwork for a letterhead, okay? This is what the artwork will look like. Now. Letterheads are used by businesses to communicate with customers and suppliers um, to kind of give across an image of, of how professional you are and what you do and what your, what your beliefs are, etc., who your audience is. You create stationery. You have a logo, a name, a slogan, a little mascot maybe. It says something about you when you're communicating with, uh, with anybody. So this is what we're going to produce. Now, we're going to produce the artwork for pre-printed stationery. This is the artwork that you would send to the printers. So why pre-printed stationery? Well, it's more cost-effective. It's much cheaper to print 5,000 letterheads um, down at the local printers than it is to print 5,000 on your laser printer. Laser printers require toner, servicing, etc., etc. Much more cost-effective. So if you're an owner of a small business and you don't have pre-printed stationery, you should. It's much, much cheaper. Um, the other thing, of course, aesthetically speaking, from an artwork point of view, is this, this kind of effect where the, the color bleeds off the page um, looks nice, but you can't do it really with conventional laser printers, okay? This is what a conventional laser printer artwork would look like. You'll notice the white space around the outside here, and that's the space that the laser printer needs in order to feed the paper through the machine. Aesthetically, it doesn't look as nice it doesn't look as nice. Okay, let me just rearrange the screen. Look. So we're going to create the artwork for this one here, the one in the background. By the way, you're looking at a PDF digital version of, of the artwork. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Uh, in doing so, you should learn an awful lot about Corel Draw. So I'll, I'll stop waffling and I'll open the program. Now, before we start producing the artwork, we need to set up the interface uh, and various document properties. I'll open a new blank document, okay? Now, when the document opens for the first time, you may or may not see various menus around. I'll show you how to turn menus on and off, and I'll tell you which ones are important to have on. At the moment, every single one that you see here, the top five, you must have visible, okay? Now, to turn them on and off, you right mouse click anywhere in these, this area here, and you select. So the standard menu, for example, this one here. That's kind of like the shortcut menu. You can actually customize these uh, if you use a particular tool more often than you do any other uh, and you want to speed up the process of producing artwork, make sure that that one is available and modify it, okay? It, I can zoom in and out using this. I can do something called snap. Um, so let's go back to nothing, okay? So we'll start with the status bar. This sits at the bottom of the page, tells you various things, useful things about the document or the objects that you've got selected in the document. We need the standard, I've just explained. Lots of shortcuts that will speed up the process of producing artwork. The property bar, very important. If you haven't got anything selected on, on, in the workspace here, it will tell you all about the document itself. Okay, um, must have that toolbox or property bar open. Toolbox. Uh, exactly what it sounds like. This is, these are the tools. You can't produce anything or fix anything unless you have the tools to do so. Um, one other thing before we move on. Um, so we've got everything that we can see on the screen uh, menu-wise visible, the top five. You'll notice here on the standard uh, menu bar, Snap 2. Now, for this particular document, we need to have Snap guidelines and objects selected okay now you can either do it here or if you don't want that menu bar or if, it, if it's not visible you can also do the same thing by going into the view menu view snap to guidelines snap to objects okay we must make sure that we've got the guidelines visible that we've got rulers visible okay anything that you need to see or view other than main menus, is in here. So we must have rulers visible, guidelines visible, snap to guidelines enabled, and snap to objects enabled. I'll explain more about these in subsequent videorials. Um, 
Right, before we go on any further, I'm just going to explain the property bar here. We've not, we haven't got anything selected, so it's displaying page properties. Okay, depending on where you are in the world, uh, you will select a different page size. In England, we use A4 as a standard size for a, for a letterhead. In America, you might use something like a letter. Um, so I've selected A4. The size will automatically come up here. This is orientation, landscape, portrait. In England, uh, letterheads are portrait. Uh, units of measurement, millimeters in the UK, inches in America, possibly. Now, this option here, this dictates how much an object will move when you hit the arrow keys on the keyboard. So if I put a, a box there, a rectangle on the page, um, at the moment it's set to, each time I hit the button on the keyboard, it will nudge the object. You can see it very subtly moving, but very slowly, by 0.1 millimeter each time I hit the button. If I want to move it slightly more each time I hit the button, just change it to 5 millimeters. Each time I hit the button now, it moves much further. Okay. For accuracy, though, I suggest you have 0.1. Okay, or oh, that will obviously be different if you're dealing with inches. Okay, a couple more things we need to have displayed. These are called dockers. They sit on the right-hand side of the screen. They dock to the right-hand side of the screen. For this video or this project, we need to be able to transform objects very quickly and precisely. So we need to go into dockers, transformations, position. There we go. This docker must be visible. Okay, you can minimize it and maximize it. It replicates a lot of the um, commands and, and parameters and information that we see in this property bar here. For example, draw a rectangle very quickly. The uh, position replicated here and here. Okay, rotation again replicated here. Um, you can do things like skew. Um, you can actually create copies of objects. It's a really, really useful tool to have open or a docker to have open. So just delete that object. One more docker we're going to need, and that is the contour docker. Again, I'll explain these in a lot more detail um, in, an, in a subsequent video. Reel. You can remove these. Just click and drag and click and drag them back. It's a case of experimenting with, with what works best for you. I prefer this, this configuration, nice and neat. I can minimize, maximize. Right, one last thing with regard to the interface, and that is to display the color palette that we're going to use. Now, I'm going to suggest you use um, a palette. Well, it's not displayed here. So to find more palettes and select more palettes, just hit more palettes. The color palette manager opens. Now, it will locate um, folders that have palettes in or at least uh, Corel Draw, that, that Corel Draw knows has palettes in. So it will default to these uh, folders. I'm going to suggest you go into Spot, Pantone, Previous Version, and then select Matching System Coated Corel 10. Now to display the palette, you just simply double click. I'll explain more about why I'm selecting that particular palette in, in another video reel. Um, to remove a palette, we just go palette, close. Just redisplay it. Again, if you want to um, remove these dockers, you just hit the X, docker, position. Okay. Window, docker, contour. Okay, just minimize that. Now, guidelines. They're visible. How do we get them on the page? Well, it's very straightforward. You move your, your pointer or your mouse over the ruler there. Click with your left mouse button and then drag. And then it will leave the, gui the guideline where you release it. Click, drag, release. Click, drag, release. Click, drag, release. Okay, now I've positioned them very roughly. And like anything else, whatever you select on the page, it has properties. So if I select, for example, this guideline, it turns red to denote that I've selected it. And then it gives me the properties. Now, in order to bleed the image off the page like we did um, here, let me just zoom out, we need to bleed it off. What will happen at the printers is they'll print it over size, bleeding the image off, and then it will go to a guillotine operator who will trim the size of the paper down to the required size. down. So they will actually print on slightly larger than A4. Okay, So we need to bleed it off by about 2 millimeters. 
Okay, so we're going to set the guidelines to two millimeters, slightly bigger than the actual page size we're going to require or need. Okay, so if you're not, if you don't really understand that, just go with it. And I think by the time we finish the project, you will understand. So I'm going to set this to minus two, two millimeters smaller. This one I'm going to set to minus two as well. This is the x coordinate, the height. This one is going to be. Now, if we look at the page size, two millimeters beyond the page size, that's two millimeters more, so it's 212. 212, oops, sorry, I got that one completely wrong. It's 297, so therefore it will be 299. 299. This one will be 212. Okay, now we're almost ready to go. The last thing we need to do um, is the most important, really. Uh, when working on any document and that's to save it. Okay, so we'll go file, save as. Now, you'll notice that I've created on my desktop a folder called letterhead. Keep yourself organized, especially when you're producing a, a complicated project. Uh, makes working much, much easier and simpler. Even give, give it a, a file name that represents what the file is. So I'm going to call it letterhead uh, artwork um, galaxy. That's the name of the company or part of the name of the company. I'm just going to hit save. Right, that's it. We're ready to go. The user interface has got all the tools that we need. We have a color palette. We have some guidelines to denote the workspace that we're going to be working within. That's it for this video reel. In the next video reel, we'll look at some of the shapes. We'll start applying some artwork to our workspace. Um, thank you for watching.